Hello, my dear students. Today we are going to study for a course MTP 102. This is unit fifth of your course today. Understanding colors. Objective. In this lesson, we will study and understand about colors. What are the points one has to keep in mind while choosing a color scheme for a design to look attractive and beautiful? Why is it necessary to have the knowledge about color? If one is involved in a design, whether on paper, cloth fabric garment or any other creation of visual product an understanding of color will help when incorporating it into your own design. Choices regarding color often seem rather a bit difficult as many seem to base decisions on nothing other than it looks nice although often people say I have an eye for color. The reason why some colors look good together while others do not is a big question. There the knowledge of colors come handy. An ordinary design with a beautifully worked out color scheme can work wonders. Whereas an excellent design with an unharmonious choice of colors can ruin all our hard work of creative designs. If we explore a little we come to know there are two main reasons to study and understand colors. The first involves the communication of colors, the other involves the application of colors. Color basics. Color is light and light is composed of many colors. Those we see the colors of a visual spectrum are red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. Objects absorb certain colors and reflect others. What we see is color. When all the light rays are reflected, we see white. But when all the light rays are absorbed, we see black. A color is described by its name, how pure it is and its value or lightness. Although pink, crimson or brick are all variations of color red, each hue is distinct in to differentiate by its intensity and value. Intensity and value are interrelated terms and have to do with the description of colors. Intensity is the brightness or dullness of a hue. One may lower the intensity by adding white or black. Value. A measure of amount of light reflected from a hue. Those hues with high content of white have a higher value. Shade and tints are terms that refer to the variation of a hue. Shade, a hue produced by an addition of black. Tints are those when a hue pro produces by the addition of white, we get a hue.
call it as a hue. Now what is this hue? We were talking about colors and suddenly this hue came up. Hue is nothing else but in the jargon of color, we call it as a hue. The color wheel. The color wheel is the basic tool for combining colors. A color wheel is a visual representation of colors. The first color diagram was designed by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666. In a color wheel, position primary hues equidistant from one another, creating a bridge between primaries using secondary and tertiary colors. Primary colors are three in nature. These colors are called primary because you cannot mix any color to create them. They are red, blue and yellow. Secondary colors. The three secondary colors are purple, orange and grey. They are called secondary colors because they are created by mixing two primary colors. That is red and blue will give you purple. Red and yellow will give you orange. Blue and yellow will give you green. So here the secondary colors are placed on the color wheel between the two primaries that created them on the opposite side of the color wheel to each other. Secondary color is a primary color, it's complementary color. So red is opposite to and the complementary color of green, blue the complementary of orange, and yellow the complementary of purple. One of the benefits of placing a primary color and its complementary color next to each other is that they both make each other look much more vibrant. Tertiary colors yellow orange red orange red purple purple blue or blue green and yellow green these are the colors formed by mixing one primary and one secondary color that's pretty simple that we just had three colors and then out of those three colors we got another three colors which were the secondary and out of those secondary colors, we got another six. Those were the tertiary. So in all, we got 12 colors in our color wheel. Warm and cool colors. The cool, can you imagine what it is? Or the warm color what it is? The color wheel circle can be divided into warm and cool colors. If we take and we just have, a, we just cut across. Half of it would be the cool color and the half would be the warm color. The warm colors are vivid and energetic and tend to advance in space.
whereas the cool colors give an impression of calmness and create a soothing impression. White, black and grey are considered to be neutrals. They will not be combined in the cool or the warm colours. Complementary colours. We look at a colour wheel to understand the relationship between colours. The colors that are positioned opposite one another are complementary colors. They create a subtle vibrancy and brilliancy. And when we want to tone down a color, they are done. So with a touch of its complementary color, which gives much more harmonious and satisfying shade, rather than adding black, which can all too easily kill a color. So please try avoid using the black. The colors of yellow and purple placed next to each other. They are vibrant and bright. Complementary colors bring out the best in each other. And extremely interesting effects can be achieved. How do we see colors? Color is light. And colored objects absorb and reflect light. Light and colors are seen by the eye because of the two types of cells it has. Those are the rods and cones located in the retina of the eye. Rods are sensitive to light and dark. Cones are sensitive to red, green and blue light and responsible for color vision. These cells convey the color of light to the brain. Isn't that interesting? I wonder how many of you really thought how one sees a color. But it's a little scientific. If we think or use our upper story, I should rather say, we can see the colors. Because they're the cells set of rods and cones which help us to see the colors. Color combinations are color harmonies. Using a color wheel, the relationship between colors are easy to identify. Monochromatic relationship, colors that are shade or tint variation of the same hue are known as a monochromatic relationship. And uh, what do you think should be the split complementary? One hue plus two others equally spaced opposite is known as a complementary color. Double complementary relationship, two complementary colors sets, the distance between selected complementary pairs will affect the overall contrast of the final composition.
analogous relationships. Those colors located adjacent to each other on a color wheel are known as the analogous relationship. Triad relationship. Three hues equally positioned on a color wheel is known as the triad color relationship. Using color. The ability to use colors effectively is difficult to learn and comes with lots of experience and a good eye. The advice is simple. Keep in mind what you are trying to communicate with and make it look right to you. Look carefully and critically at how nature and other artists use color. Learn first by observation and then by using color in your own artwork. Self-check questions. Name the three primary colors. So number two, name the three secondary colors. If you have answered those two questions, let me give you some fill in the blanks. They are extremely easy and uh, if you want, you don't have to really write. You can just answer them as I go along. A combination of primary colors, yellow and red, produces which color can you all tell me what are the color you get when you see yellow and red the second fill in the blank today is a combination of primary color blue and yellow produces please write the answer or tell your teacher what color you get when you mix blue and Yellow. If you have answered these, let me give you the activity. Make a color wheel. Color it carefully, showing the primary, secondary and tertiary colors. Now, pierce the center with a pin, attaching a stick to the color wheel and spin the wheel. Can you imagine what you are going to see? I had told you that when all the colors are reflected we see white. So when you spin the color wheel all the light is reflected and we see white. Isn't that extremely interesting? Activity which can be planned and that looks really very interesting is 
another very interesting activity which can be done by you people is take the plasticine or what you call it the plastic clay take that maybe you could take just the three primaries that is the red blue and the yellow mix the yellow with blue and see what you get then mix the blue with red and see what you get and then eventually mix the red with yellow and see what you get isn't that extremely interesting Isn't that extremely interesting? If you have done that, let me sum up what we have studied today. The salient points covered in this lesson are, we had explained you the three primaries. Then I had spoken to you about the secondaries, how we get them and then the tertiaries. When we had learned or rather after learning what were the primary, secondary and tertiary, I also told you about the value, the tints and the tones. How a color, the value of a color or the intensity of a color can be raised or lower was also told to you. I also told you that it is better to use white than to use the black which actually kills a color. If you want to mix colors, we want to make it brighter or we want to make it duller, it is always advisable to use a color of a particular shade than to use the black. The harmonies were also explained to you. Actually, when we talk about the harmonies, it is a very scientific way of looking at the colors. But once if we understand the scientific way, our designs would have a 180 degrees transformation. They would look so beautiful. Because if we are using the contrast or if we are using the monochromatic scheme or the analog scheme, or the triad scheme, we would come to know exactly how and when a particular color should be used to give an effective design. Thank you.